Hi, this is Mike Goodicke, and I'm going to give you another quick motion tutorial. So what we're going to be creating today is this kind of cool Superman type effect. I don't know if you guys remember the first Superman movie. They kind of had this type, type effect where the type would kind of come towards the camera and extrude. Um, I'm doing it in the reverse direction just because it's a little bit more useful if, if you can kind of use it in reverse. Because uh, you can kind of do tonight, tomorrow, whatever, you know, some typography here. So this is a really easy effect, and I'm going to show you how to make it. And uh, we'll have some fun at the end just kind of experimenting. All right, so let's start off by making a new project. So we go up to Motion, we go to File, New, New Motion Project. I'm making it 10 seconds long. And here we go. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the shape styles over here um, in your library and you're going to scroll down to scales. So you're going to see a thing that's called scales. And it's right here. And we're just going to drag that into our group. And after you drag it into your group here, you're going to look at your inspector and you're going to go over to the shape and you can go to geometry. I'm going to make this minus Let's do minus 2500 and let's do positive 2500. And basically that's your start of your stroke and your end of your stroke. All right. And we're going to change this to a linear um, from Bezier. And then we're going to go over to style and we are going to change the brush strokes. Right now it's, it's sort of this pattern um, and we want to make it a piece of type. So let's take a piece of type and let's write tonight with that piece of type. And we're going to take that piece of type and we're going to make it pretty big. So let's uh, select it. Let's make it size 200. And let's center it. And then let's center it on the baseline as well. So you're going to adjust your baseline so that it, it's centered. I'm going to go to properties and we're going to center the actual type on the screen. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have it be outline. Um, so we're going to go over here into appearance on our type. We're going to turn off the face and we're going to turn on outlines. And we're going to make the color white. And we're going to make the stroke width two pixels. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to go back over to scales. And the scales, basically, this stroke, this brush stroke, is taking this kind of painterly looking ink sponge and it's repeating it along the length of those, of those two points. So we're going to have it repeat the type. So we're going to grab the type. And we're going to drag it into the image source here. All right. So now we've, we've made the stroke be that type. So under the stroke now, we're going to reset all these things. So width over stroke, we're going to reset that. Spacing, reset that. Angle over stroke, let's reset that. And now we've got all those things uh, reset. So we're going to go over to our scales property. And we're going to zoom. I mean, we're going to rotate it on the Y. I'm going to rotate it minus 90 degrees. So now it's actually rotated towards us. Now we can't see this, right? It's very, very dark. So we're going to go over here to, I mean, very bright. So we're going to go over to the, our type layer again, and we're going to adjust the opacity down to 10%. Now we can actually see the, this kind of light ray uh, effect that's happening. And if we turn off the original type, we just have our stroke. Now, what's cool about this is once we have this, we'll go back over to the scales and we'll go to our shape and we're going to go to the style. And you see here, it's the first point offset and the last point offset. So that's basically where does the stroke start between those two points and where does it end between those two points. So I can animate this and basically give it this, this look that it's you know, like a light ray coming towards us, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by animating it from off screen. So we're going to have the, the starting point 
be 100%. We're gonna go over like 60 frames, two seconds, and make that zero. So now we'll see it's coming back and it hits there. Now what we're gonna do is go over to like 50 frames, like 10 frames shy of the end, and we're gonna animate the last point. And then we're gonna go over to 110 frames. And we wanna animate it not down to zero, but just down to like 0.1 or 0.2. All right, so now if we play this back, we got the tonight coming in and now the type comes back and, and meets it. Now it's really dim here at the end and there's a little workaround thing that you can do to fix that because basically every time it repeats, it gets brighter, right? Because it's layering those, those elements on top of each other. So what I do to fix that little glitch there and there might be a better way and feel free to tell me in the comments below if there is but what I do is I take the type layer which I've made 10% and I just basically animate it as it's closing down here I just go up to like say 50% well, that might be too bright 40% And then I kind of figure out when I need to start it and end it. Boop, boop. Maybe one frame sooner. Yeah, so you can find this area here. And you know, you can if you if you want it to be more powerful impact, you can bring it back further. But that basically allows you to just keep the type bright at the very end. You can kind of experiment with that. You could even make it go solid at that point if you wanted the the element to get solid. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to introduce a little bit of movement on this, right? So we want to like kind of do a little bit of a, of a move. So at the start of this, we're going to go to our scales la layer. And we're going to adjust the position. So we're going to start with it maybe like minus 100 at the start. So it's a little bit below the camera. And then here we're going to make it like, let's say 50. Now you get kind of this looking deal going on. Pretty nice. Now we want to add a twist to it, right? Okay, so the way you're going to add a twist is a little bit different than what you would imagine. So you go into the scales and you go into the shape and you go into the stroke. We have a little thing here that's called angle over stroke. So that means that at the start and at the end, what is the angle, right? So let's click on the end frame and let's see if we make the angle 180 at the end. So remember I did this backwards. So at the start, it's upside down. And then as it comes forward, it goes back towards 180. So that gives you this really cool looking element. And obviously if you wanted it to rotate more, uh, you could just click on the end stroke again and make it, let's say 360. Now it's really leaving like a spin trail.
but that might be too much, so we'll undo that. Now, the only last thing that I would suggest you do is just add a little bit of Z movement. So if you take the whole group, we can kind of animate the overall Z of that group. So let's set a keyframe there at the start. Uh, maybe set a keyframe at the end here. Let's go like minus 1000. So it's just kind of, it keeps moving back. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Thanks.